Hello and welcome to Film Family. Um, today we'll be discussing Rocket Man, um, which yeah. we all saw recently. Yeah. So yeah, I really like this movie actually. Uh, you know, with nowadays we get a lot of you know biopics about musicians and bands and everything. And you know, I think a lot of people are saying it's getting a little tiresome. And uh, you know, even though I, I do agree, maybe there's one too many every now and then. But I think this is a pretty interesting and pretty uh, creative movie. Like, and it doesn't you know shy away from some of the ugly parts of Elton John's life. And I think Elton John, you know, he knew that he should tell an authentic and uh, true story. And uh, that for me, like, it resulted in you know a very not only enjoyable movie, but you know a movie I thought you know shined a really interesting light on his career and his life and just him as a person as well. Are you a fan of Elton John? Like before you watch this movie, were you? Oh yeah, and so I should music? say I'm not even like a big Elton John fan. I don't dislike Elton John at all. I just never really um, like had listened to Elton John, but I do think he's very talented. And you know, I think uh, Taron Egerton, who played him in this movie, did a really good job. Um, not only from t- uh, taking some of his mannerisms, but from some of the smaller moments of acting, some of his looks, kind of his double takes, some of the scenes where he kind of looks in you know the direction and sort of doubts himself or doubts others. And uh, I think the whole supporting cast movie did a really good job, too. And I really did, uh, you know, I enjoy this movie. Some of the musical numbers, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of those, just because I think it was a little weird to kind of bust out these music numbers. But, you know, I think for a biopic, it is a unique kind of idea, and, uh, a unique sort of method to get across some of those famous songs that you know, Elton John is known for. What about you, Prince? I really like the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said in Latin, I'm not a big fan of musicals, and... I'm with BG. I'm, I don't dislike Elton John, but I haven't really listened to his music growing up. You know, Rocket Man, I think everybody's heard that. Um, I feel there was a lot of songs in the movie that I found out were Elton John. And yeah. I didn't know they yep. were Elton mm-hmm. John. But I liked a lot of the musical numbers. And there's some of them, very few of them I actually thought didn't really work. And they're usually when they're the duets. And you'll have one character, you know, singing in a different room, yeah, like that scene where they had else. as a kid, and the mom, dad, and everybody, everybody else is else. singing that they want love. Well, I think uh, Taron Edgerton actually he sung a uh, song in this movie himself, uh, you know, not so they didn't just kind of copy and paste Elton John and like make him lip sync it, which I thought was a nice touch because you know from from what I heard he's a pretty talented singer, and you know I think they do a good job too at some of the uh, stadium scenes in this movie. There's other biopics like such as Bohemian Rhapsody, which came out last year, which have longer stadium scenes and delve more into the songs, but I think the movie was more about kind of some of the problems he went through and like how they were still making him go on stage. And I think that was something interesting because I don't think the movie tries to shy away from the idea of, you know, that being a celebrity and it's not easy and like some of the difficulties that Alan John had personally and, you know, just some of the larger problems that exist in the music industry. And I thought that was super interesting. And I think Taron Edgerton, like I said, he did a really good job at conveying kind of the different sides, the playful side, the musical side, the, you know, tortured side, all those sides of Elton John. And yeah, I think he did a really good job. What, what did you think, Tyler? Um, everything you guys said, I agree with, but I didn't like the movie. Really? I, yeah. I, the problem is, is I'm too big of an Elton John fan. Oh. I think that was the thing that for me, you know, there's one Elton John and it's not like I didn't want to see someone else play him. I think, you know, he did an incredible job playing Elton and also singing and, and that. But I, and I'm a huge fan of musicals. Like, and I, I just felt that they didn't fit correctly in a, in a way. It was almost like it was so surreal. Like they would just bust into singing, you know, mm. almost. I, think, like, yeah. I was going to say, I think they did that to uh, kind of escape being just another biopic because like we said, there's a lot of biopics and they really, a lot of the times what they do is they'll show them, you know, the artists or artists when they're younger, mm-hmm. shows how they grew up, how they got into music. It shows their early days, how they were discovered that it, there's a scene of them in a big stadium singing. You know, you see that with multiple movies and you know, this movie, I think they decided to show how some of the music kind of plays out for him because those weren't meant to be taken literally. They were kind of more yeah, that's, for entertainment yeah. and also to show Eld's kind of musical mind and how he sort of like, would picture the world around him as you know somebody who liked music, and uh, I thought that was kind of a creative way to take that. It, it's cr- it was creative, but that I went in thinking I was going to see a biopic like Bohemian yeah. Rhapsody. Like you I don't literally think there were <laughs> scenes though that there were very many like you know there are a lot of scenes that kind of focused on his own uh, personal life, his own personal problems, and his relationships. You know, and obviously he had kind of a strange relationship with his parents, and I think there's a. Probably Those were great, but yeah. then I also want, like, as a fan, I wanted to know, okay, what made you write this song? Or, mm-hmm. but I like watching him, like, they just busted into any song, and it was like, okay, was that song 
literally in, from that event, or was that just because that song sounds that, good right now? Yeah, that's interesting, in. that, but that's I think they didn't want to make something, I don't think, too, that sound unrealistic, because obviously you can't get a refactor in a biopic or any movie that's about something in history. It's impossible. But, like, Elton John, like, I'm sure they didn't want to have something kind of dumb in the movie, like him sitting there looking at, like, a dancing toy, like, Tiny Dancer. I'm going to make a song called that, because maybe, like, that's not how it happened in real life. So I think the way they were explaining is that he just kind of had melodies and he had ideas in his head and, uh, you know, the his partner would help him, uh, would write them and, you know, he would kind of look at them and uh, discover some music and instruments that would go with them and then kind of sing them. So I don't think, you know, I do understand, you know, I enjoy seeing where certain songs kind of come from, but and for me that wasn't a major problem to mm -hmm. see that because I did think the point of it was not the actual, you know, content of the songs, but it was about how El John is a big fan of not just music, but, you know, kind of melodies and putting a song together. And they don't always show that in the movies that, you know, an artist is a fan of music. Sometimes they show him as a celebrity. But I think in this movie they did a good job of showing him as kind of an authentic fan of music and, you know, the kind of intricacies of it. Yeah. I agree with what you said um, as far as kind of breaking the biopic line because I was hoping to learn something. And I did learn a lot about Elton John about his, in like, this film. Childhood but and it was a little confusing at parts. Um, for me, example, for me, the main example was when he OD'd or tried to mm -hmm. in the pool. Yeah. And then they just the switched and he's performing. And I didn't know. Obviously, he didn't well, go and get help I for think it. The, but, you that know. scene was saying that he OD'd. And then basically the whole point, I think, of the middle part of the movie was showing that a lot of the people in his team didn't really care about him personally, and he was just a kind of a machine for them to make money. And obviously, he he was uh, responsible for five percent of the total music sales of the world, which is you know a huge accomplishment. And so for him, like he was getting frustrated because they didn't care about him as a person; they just cared about his songs and you know his celebrity instead of him as an individual. And I think that showed that you know through that kind of anger and depression that he had, you know, he kind of took substances and, you know, that really propelled him to kind that of... That doesn't explain what happened from the OD to the point that he was on stage dressed as a baseball player. Did you not listen to what I player. said? I literally you said You explained that why he, they, he tried they, to take the drugs. Okay, I'm no, saying they he got out of whatever, you know, and they're saying that it doesn't matter what happened, they still made him go on stage, even though he probably should have been, you know, resting after his... You know his trip to the hospital. Well, so. what if it's not as cool as that, and they're just like, ah, I don't even know how to make it, just like you said with the tiny what? dancer. What? No, like what? They would. Uh, maybe you're just doing something, something a little to. more profound, something that isn't as profound. It's not profound. It's literally the point of the middle part of the movie is that he's not. He doesn't like how people are treating him because they're not treating him like he would be, but more as you know a shell for money. And so they decided to probably skip his. Do you really want to see a ten minute you know scene of a doctor telling him that he had overdosed on drugs, like? I'm pretty sure they didn't feel like they needed to or show Or maybe that. the first time he found the AA -A -A or whatever it is, the meeting that he was at, because he left a show. Did, did, that, did, did that actually happen, by the way? Because I don't know. That, that's happened. what that's the we problem. Probably I, I don't know what Maybe happened. that's our fault for not looking that but, up. But I mean, but, I would like that to be in a bio a biopic. I would like to know if this was I real think that was or a, if that was a fantasy. Well, then you know? if the movie shows that it happened that way, then let's assume it happened that way, because that is what the movie showed us. We didn't look it up before. But he went from drowning in his pool to performing on a piano. Do you take that literally? I'm not sure how to take it, to tell you the truth. Because I don't know. He, it was a very flammable buoyant you know performer and i'm not sure which one was real and which one is like an actual fantasy no I that think, was clearly yeah. not a fantasy he was because it was it was sold as a bio yeah. pick, to me at least as a, in the trailer i think that was a, if they would have said this is the journey of elton john mm -hmm. just or just like come the imagination of elton john i would have been down with it i've been mm -hmm. like okay so we're just gonna go everywhere and that's cool because that's what you know like his music went like that he was all over the place you know, that just Elton John. I did feel like the editing was almost in style of Elton John. It was okay. like, jumped here, and then jumped here. But maybe I was just coming from the Bohemian Rhapsody line of thought where it's like, they showed that, you know, when um, Freddie Mercury found out that he had AIDS or, they, mm -hmm. you know, or HIV. And but they showed him arguing with his bandmates, which they did as well in this, but then they really went, went into what it really did to well, him. Well, I think, yeah. too, that Queen, or Bohemian Rhapsody is about Queen. While Freddie Mercury was the main character, it was a movie about the band. Mm -hmm. Well, this movie is about individual L. John. And there were, of course, people who, you know, were around him and uh, things like that. But the movie was about him and his personal struggles and how he kind of, you know, learn to overcome those struggles and become a great, uh, better individual for it. And th so for me, I actually kind of agree with the all-around editing, just kind of cutting, because mm -hmm. that was a little bit of Elton John's style. persona. Yeah. And so I think that was a pretty interesting uh, observation, because I think that the point of this movie, the reason it started with him at the rehab circle, was to show that everything in, like he had, you know, 
endured up to that point in his life was leading to that, you mm-hmm. know, moment. And so in that moment, he learned to kind of accept himself and stop trying to be, you know, somebody who he's not. And that, that was a very, uh, you know, for me, emotional moment with his parents where yeah. he decided, like, you know, I'm not going to let you guys bring me down. I'm going to be the person I want to be. Because I think that was, you know, a very powerful message of the movie. And then it shows, you know, even at the end that even today he's still making music, you know, he has his AIDS foundation, so... And he's become better because of the struggles he had to go through. So, for me, that was that was really why I like this movie. I think they did a good job at kind of conveying that. Yeah, I, I like this movie because of all that. I think <clears throat> I think the acting was great. It was uh, it definitely made you feel something and connect with the people? I think that the even the musical soundtrack. I'm not sure how many of them are actually Elton John songs or if they were all, written all, for the movie. No, they're all. I mean, are they all? Because I, I was talking to Molly about it. And she said like two of them she had never heard before. They might have been really early on. When yeah, he, so a few of them were in there. I really, I mean, I found some new music that I'm definitely going to be listening oh, to. Yeah, it's incredible. Uh, but I, what I really want to talk about is the costumes, and yeah. I think Elton John is known for the costumes, and I don't know. I didn't see him perform, so I don't know if they were yeah. like spot on with it. They're pretty spot on. I really yeah. like that bird feather costume yeah. he was playing the piano. Yeah. I think that just looked so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think those two doing that scene of the AA meeting where he's kind of taking off mm-hmm. each piece. I think that was a little bit of like symbolism for him taking off the pieces of himself and kind of you know rebranding himself and whatnot. And I thought that was very interesting. And I did. I uh, I did like the idea of this movie a lot kind of a celebratory look at El John mm-hmm. and his accomplishments. I wish they went a little uh, later to his career. Like, I was interested if they were going to uh, talk about him at the Grammys with Eminem and if they were going to go into the 2000s or anything. But, you know, they stopped where they wanted to. Obviously, yeah. they could have put that in if they wanted to. They clearly just, you know, that's not what they wanted to do. So I was I was fine with it not being in there. And I did like how they did show a lot of kind of the things he's, he's still doing today and how he's impacted music. That was probably my one main criticism of this movie, is I did wish they showed a little bit more of his cultural impact or his impact on other musicians. Mm. Um, but it wasn't like a big enough criticism for me to you know dislike the movie or anything. But it was definitely something I wish they delved into a little more because it's a relatively short movie. So, I mean, it was two, two hours, hours, one, one minute. minute. Yeah. Mm. Well, it was, you know. I felt like the ending kind of dragged out a little bit. I, I felt like I got to a part once he hit the closure, and I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm cool with it now, guys. Let's wrap it on up. But mm. I was happy. I agree. I was happy with the way it ended. Yeah, well, speaking of wrapping it up, I guess we should wrap yeah. it up. Rank yeah. it. I give it, a, I give it an 8 out of 10. Whoa. Okay. okay. Well, that's a pretty high. That, I would actually give it an 8, 8 and a half. I really enjoyed the movie. I, I would definitely see it again. Um, but, yeah, I would give it an 8 and a half. 8, 8 and a half. I'm going to give it a 6, just mm. because... As an Elton John fan and a huge fan of Elton John in terms of he's a legendary songwriter to me. And I just wish I knew more. Like, I felt like I got a brush stroke of like, this is who he is, Mm -hmm. Um, which was a great um, brush stroke. Don't get me wrong. Like knowing about his parents, the fam, you know, his childhood and all that stuff. But I think that they could have done more in terms of letting me know. I'll say this about the last thing is that uh, the movie I think was less about his career and more about his personal life whereas a movie like Bohemian Rhapsody was more about the career and less about his personal life. That's what I got for the movie. Uh, So yeah, that's that's why I think this movie did look allied to the, you know, more deeper things or the more Hollywood aspect of his life look more to his personal, you know, his personal life. Yeah. Well, so, yes. Thank you, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and we'll be uh, sending you some more weekly content. Let us know what you think about Rocket Man.